Rancher Bears Mail Order Mate, Rancher Bears Series Book 2, written by Candace Ayers, narrated by McKenna Lee. Chapter 1. Layla. I was wearing the same clothes that I'd worn the day before, jeans and a thick sweater that'd seen better days. My hair was dirty and hanging limply from a ponytail. I hadn't touched makeup in years, so every dark circle and bag was clearly displayed, without a trace of concealer to hide behind. What I'd give for a stick of concealer. What I'd do for a chance at a hot shower. Next stop landing. Two hours until arrival. The bus driver announced over the static-filled speaker system. He glanced at me through the rearview mirror and shook his head. Sure you're okay, lady? I hugged myself tighter and nodded. Never been better. It was the truth. And wasn't that just the saddest thing ever? Two years earlier, I would have seen that bus as a big doom wagon. What a thing perspective was. That bus was a freedom wagon, carrying me straight to another chance at life. I knew nothing about landing Wyoming, except that there was a man there named Matt Long who was desperate for a wife. My stomach twisted, but I knew that no man could be as bad as my ex. Even if Matt Long was a balding man who wore gold chains and referred to me as his bitch, he'd be better than my ex. I stood up and made my way to the bathroom at the back of the bus. The only other person who'd gotten on the bus in Cheyenne had gotten off earlier in the trip, so I had no competition. The tiny room smelled like death, and I prayed the smell didn't stick to me. My reflection in the small mirror was sad and pitiful. The last fight I'd had with my ex showed in ghost-like prints across my neck and throat. A bite mark here and five finger impressions there. A real stand-up guy, he'd been. I pulled the sweater higher and tried to imagine myself as a beautiful bride arriving to meet her new husband for the first time. Everything was wrong with the picture. Matt Long had ordered a bride. Instead of that bride, I was showing up. A beat-down, beat-up, smelly mess of a woman who bribed her way into a mail-order bride service last minute. The poor man. I'd been on the run through a small town in southern Louisiana when I'd stumbled across Beatrix's buxom beauties. The sign in the window read that she arranged long-distance marriages, and I'd rushed right in. Beatrix turned out to be a 70-year-old woman who didn't get many calls. She'd been more than willing to talk to me all about her latest bachelor. Matt was a rancher from Wyoming who needed a wife to settle some family issue, but he was open to love. It'd taken Beatrix a while to find someone young enough for him, but she'd finally settled on a woman named Maggie. Maggie was a few years older than Matt, but she loved the country and had once owned a cow. Beatrix was also ready to retire. I had $20,000 in my bag that I'd stolen from my ex when I'd left. I offered her half to replace Maggie. She'd given me a plane ticket and instructions on which bus to take once I'd reached Cheyenne and sent me on my way. It had been dumb luck showing up there when I did. As I was leaving, the real Maggie appeared to get her plane ticket. I'm not sure what excuse Beatrix gave her. I didn't stick around to find out. It felt a little like fate. I'd walked into the perfect situation at the perfect moment. Perhaps it was a sign that my luck was about to change. I'd tossed the plane ticket in the nearest dumpster and had gotten on a bus right away. The trip was longer and harder that way, but it wouldn't leave a trace. I turned away from my reflection and went back to my seat. There wasn't time enough to spend in any bus bathroom that would make me look more like Maggie Stevens, excited bride-to-be. I hugged my knees to my chest and settled in. Maggie or not... I was about to land in Matt Long's lap. 
Chapter 2. Layla. Good luck out there. I nodded to the bus driver. Thanks. Have a good one. He drove back the way we'd come and slowly disappeared from sight. I looked around at the town and took in a refreshing breath of crystal clean air. It was fresh, but ice cold, and I immediately started shivering. But the air was cleaner than anything I'd smelled in the past two days, by far. The bus stop was in the middle of a tiny town, surrounded on one side by mountains and the other by a rolling river. Tall pines grew up around the place like a comforting blanket. I instantly felt safer than I had in longer than I could remember. A woman walking down the street cast me a strange sideways glance and hurried past. I shrugged and looked around a bit more, after remembering that I was supposed to be meeting my new fiancé. I spent the next couple of hours walking up and down landing, going into stores and asking around. No one would tell me anything. In fact, the town was so secretive, you would think that it was running from a dangerous ex instead of the other way around. I was about to give up and rent a motel room for the night when a woman drove by in a pickup truck and stopped for me. You lost? She tossed her blonde hair over her shoulder and sent a sweet smile my way. Do you know who Matt Long is? Her eyes narrowed and she blew out a sigh. Unfortunately, you looking for him? Worry edged its way into my stomach. Yeah, should I not be? She pushed open the passenger side door and motioned for me to get in. I'll take you to his cabin. There's no reason for you to be standing out there in the cold. I climbed in and held out my hand to her. Maggie, thanks for the lift. I'm Elizabeth. I saw you making your way around town. The townsfolk can be pretty closed off to newcomers. I stared out of the window as she drove towards the mountain. Yeah, I noticed. It was nice to see your friendly face. I was new here not too long ago. I definitely understand. So, why are you looking for Matt? I looked back over at her and tried not to feel threatened by the question. Living with my ex had taught me to be distrustful of even the simplest of questions. We have some business to take care of. She laughed. You sound like you'll fit right in here. Maybe you can get the giant stick out of Matt's ass while you're at it. He's been a big bear lately. Why? Just natural for him, I guess. The family's been going through some changes, and he's been locked away in his cabin for months. Probably up there ranting and raving. She looked over at me and rolled her eyes. I'm sure he's a nice guy, under all that broody bullshit but I haven't had the privilege of witnessing it yet. I sighed. As long as Matt wasn't a hands-on kind of guy, like my ex, we would be fine for as long as I needed to stay here. It did suck that he was apparently a cranky hermit. Maybe somewhere deep in the back of my mind, I'd hoped for a kind, generous, handsome guy to welcome me to my new home. Reality check. I couldn't make sense of why a cranky hermit would invite some strange woman into his home. It did explain why he hadn't been there to pick me up, though. Elizabeth dropped me off at the end of the driveway with a good luck and a promise to get together later if I was still in town. I waved her away and made my way to the front door. Here goes nothing. I blew out a breath and knocked on the heavy wooden door. Chapter 3. Layla A loud roar sounded from inside the cabin before the door flew open to reveal a huge bear, easily the largest bear I'd ever seen, standing on its hind legs. It growled and stared down at me through two beautiful, glowing, golden eyes. Its dark brown fur was ruffled and messy, and it looked dirty and unkempt even for a wild animal. The creature might have been in worse shape than even me. 
I took a deep breath in and blew it out slowly while putting my hands on my hips. You're shitting me. The bear took a step closer and huffed, sending little tendrils of spit flying at me. I reached up and swatted its nose before stepping around it and letting myself into the house. I don't appreciate being spit on, you big idiot. I should have known something was up when Elizabeth called you a bear. Just my luck. Just my freaking luck. Run from a gator and end up with a bear. What are the chances? Who the fuck are you? I turned around, remembering too late that, of course, once he'd shifted back, he'd be naked. Standing in front of me was a lot of really, really hot, naked human male flesh. My body immediately responded to his well-built, large, muscular frame. Raw lust building in me so fast that my cheeks turned red. Maggie, and you're Matt Long, I'm guessing. Matt, very long. Did I just say that out loud? He growled and grabbed a faded cowboy hat from the hook on the door beside him to cover his junk with. Why are you in my fucking house? Because you signed up for a wife? Voila, here I am. I waved my arms down the length of my body in a gesture meant to imply that this is what one gets when one orders a wife sight unseen. I'm going to take a shower now. It's been a long couple of days, and I need to get washed up. He blocked the way into the only other room in the small space. No way in hell. I signed up for that shit nearly eight months ago. No one told me they were sending me something. Something? I'm a person, not a thing. Check your email, buddy. Now, I'm going to be using that shower, unless you want to pull out your little bear claws and try to stop me. He let me pass, finally, and I breathed out a sigh of relief. That'd been my test to find out if he was going to be anything like my ex. I was still trembling from my act of false bravado, but it seemed like this Matt guy, despite the grumpiness, was cut from a different cloth than my ex. Thank God. Otherwise, I might have found myself with deep bear claw gashes across my back. Chapter 4. Matt. What the fuck just happened? And who just walked into my house? I stared after her, unable to take my eyes off of the way her ass filled out those fortunate jeans. She smelled slightly of sweat and something worse. But under that, I could smell a sweet vanilla scent that had called my bear right to the surface, even before she'd knocked on my front door. Maggie? Jesus, what had I done? I opened up the laptop I hadn't touched in months and jabbed at the little keys until my email opened. Sure enough, Beatrix had sent me several emails about my new bride arriving. Beatrix the same woman who couldn't find me a single damn woman under the age of 50 when I desperately needed one to claim the family ranch as my inheritance. Beatrix, the woman who I trusted to help me through the loophole in my father's damned will. I slammed the laptop closed and threw it across the cabin. Shit. The last thing I wanted was a bride. I wanted to be left alone. I didn't need a woman sniffing around my place, complicating things. Why can't people just leave me the hell alone? I couldn't say it enough. Can't a man suffer in peace? I paced around my cabin, waiting to hear the shower shut off. She'd been in there for too damn long. I hadn't even used the thing in months. I swam in the creek behind the cabin to clean off. I doubted there was even soap in there. She hadn't been afraid of me at all. She was all human, and she'd had the audacity to slap me on the nose, like I was some toy poodle. And to top that off, my bear hadn't even minded. The wild beast had been insane and uncontrollable for months. Yet when a little human woman shows up, bear practically just rolls over on his back and presents his belly to her. 
I yanked the fridge door open and glared into it. Nothing. I'd been living mostly as bear, so I ate in the woods. There wasn't even a single morsel of food in the place. Good. She couldn't stay if there wasn't any food. Not that I was going to allow her to stay anyway. I'd pay for her ticket back home and wash my hands of her. I hadn't signed any contract. I didn't have to keep her. She walked out of the bathroom at that moment, wearing nothing but a too small towel. Her long legs were still damp and tiny droplets of moisture clung to her smooth, creamy skin. Her hips tugged the towel apart at the side and revealed even more leg to my hungry eyes. Her dark, damp hair hung down past her shoulders, curling around her chest in ringlets, drawing my attention to the plump orbs being pushed up by the towel. Clean and fresh, she had my bear coming to the surface. I could feel the fur pushing to erupt on my arms and chest, and I had to grit my teeth and fight to keep the change from happening. Her smell was intoxicating. Her sweet, vanilla-like natural aroma called to my bear in a way unlike anything I'd ever experienced. What the hell was happening to me? She cocked her hip to the side and stared at me a pink tinge creeping up over her face. You didn't put clothes on. I looked down and spotted my dick, proudly standing at attention in front of me. With a frustrated growl, I went ahead and shifted, letting my bear take control of me. I was more comfortable as a bear lately anyway, and with a scantily clad woman in my home, I figured it was time to take off into the woods again. Bear growled something at me, but I ignored him. I huffed at her and moved to the door. Oh, no, you don't. She blocked the doorway and wagged her finger at me. We should talk. I'm supposed to be engaged to you. You can't just leave. I growled low in my throat and used my nose to nudge her away from the door. Only my bear didn't seem to want to leave her. He kept his head next to her, breathing in her scent. She actually giggled and rubbed the top of my head. You're cute like this. Much better than a mean old gator. Your fur is soft, too. Like a puppy I had once when I was little. First off, cute? Lady, a 400-pound grizzly is not cute. Second, neither of us liked being compared to a dog, so we growled. Loud, like a bear. She rubbed behind my ears and grinned at me. Okay, no dog references. Got it. I rubbed against her side again, enjoying the way I felt in her presence. Calm, soothed. Damned if my bear was putty in her hands. He grunted happily when she rubbed us and was almost as bad as a puppy. You're sweeter as a bear. Much sexier as a man, though. I'd like it if you changed back so we could talk. My body acted on its own accord. Within a blink of an eye, I was man again, kneeling at her feet, with my face buried against her stomach. Her hands were still in my hair, pulling softly through the messy strands. I looked up at her, and my heart started racing. I finally clued in to what my bear was chanting and froze. Over and over, bear was saying it. Mate. Running out on her wasn't my finest moment, but I don't know. I just freaked out. I was bare again before I even stepped paw off my porch. I ran deep into the woods, despite my bear's will protesting, and vowed to stay away until the human woman left. I didn't need a woman. I didn't want a woman. Most of all, I didn't think I could be with a woman. I'd become more beast than man. Hell... I wasn't sure she'd even be safe with me. Chapter 5 Layla It hadn't taken me long to run the man off, that was for sure. I certainly had a gift where the opposite sex was concerned. I got dressed in one of his flannel shirts and the same jeans I'd arrived in before searching his cabin for food. He had absolutely nothing— I found his truck key sitting under a few weeks of mail on the counter, though. If he wasn't going to stay home and talk to me, I'd just have to figure some things out on my own. 
mostly I needed to get away from his scent for a while. My heart was beating like I'd just run a marathon, and my downstairs hadn't dried since I laid eyes on him. Weird. I was reminded of whisperings I'd heard about similar reactions. Well, with my ex, Stephen, I had learned lots of things that had, at the time, made my head swim. Like the fact that shifters even existed at all. I didn't realize there were so many different types either, but I had learned a thing or two about them, nonetheless. Stephen and his family were alligators, and they were as mean as the day was long. There was no sense of humanity in them that I'd ever seen. They talked as though all other shifters were pussies compared to gators, and I'd been around enough to know that not all shifters were like Stephen and his family. It was the only reason I hadn't run screaming when Matt opened the door. I'd also heard a little about shifter mates. Women had once in a while whispered about shifters having true mates, others who they were fated to pair up with. Mates found one another through fate, the reaction between mates was sometimes, but not always, supposed to be instantaneous. Attraction like no other, and love at first sight, was the phrase many women had used. A mated pairing was highly regarded and respected amongst shifters. I had thought it was a load of crap at the time. After meeting Matt, I wasn't so sure. Something definitely took over my psyche today, while stroking Matt's bear's fur, I had experienced a warmth and serenity unlike any I'd ever felt before. I was enveloped in an indescribable feeling of safety and comfort, enough to want to curl up beside his bear and sleep. That was his bear. When he was man, I wanted to jump his bones. One large one, especially. Matt hadn't reacted to me the same way, though, there were no sweet murmurings or holding each other. In fact, he'd run out of there so fast, it was almost as though his ass was on fire. Definitely not love at first sight. I tied his shirt at the waist so it didn't look ridiculous on me, and then hurried through the cold to his truck. I had my own money, and I needed a few things if I was going to set up camp in his cabin. And I was, definitely, going to set up camp— Beatrix had done me a giant favor, sending me to Matt Long. I wasn't going to waste the opportunity. Main Street and Landing didn't have a whole lot of options when it came to clothes, but I managed to find a little country western store that sold jeans, boots, and such. I bought some clothes from an older woman who just kept giving me dirty looks and changed into a pair of clean jeans in a bathroom inside a little general store. I bought canned goods and a few jugs of water, along with multiple bags of candy and chips to snack on before going back to Matt's cabin. Matt was still gone when I got back, so I put my stuff away in his dusty cabinets and went in search of entertainment. When I found none, I just made myself at home in the middle of his bed and stuffed my face with a bag of gummy bears before falling asleep. I woke up to a huge grizzly bear head hovering over me. My heart leapt into my throat and my body entered fight or flight mode before remembering that I was staying in the cabin belonging to a bear. You gave me a damn heart attack. What are you doing? After a few seconds of his huffing and grunting, I reached up and caught his massive snout in my hands. I don't speak bear, Turn back, and we can talk. Almost immediately, I had a very human, very naked Matt kneeling beside me. I sat up so I had a leg on either side of him. His face was still in my hands. Hi. He looked up at me, through golden eyes, and grunted. His brown hair hung down to his shoulders, and he was bearded. I got the impression he hadn't worried about personal grooming for some time. He was at least a half foot over six feet tall and wide with thick, corded muscle. The man could have caused a riot of lust in any red-blooded woman, but the way my body was reacting had me wondering again about the whole faded mates thing. His face looked almost innocent, despite the full beard, as he gazed up at me. He just stared at me, unmoving and eerily calm. 
I stroked his cheeks and smiled. You get tired of playing in the woods? With a shake of his head, he frowned and scooted away from me. You're in my bed. I grinned at him and nodded. Our bed. Didn't you hear? We're getting hitched. Chapter 6. Matt. I stood up and reached into my closet to get pants. I couldn't remember the last time I'd worn clothes, but considering how often my dick was hard around the insane female, I needed something to at least pretend to hide it from her. I yanked them on and then turned around to glare at her. We're not getting hitched. I hadn't checked that email in months. I didn't know Beatrix was sending someone, and I neither need nor want a wife anymore. Genuine pain flitted over her expression for a second before she blinked it away. Every instinct in me demanded I comfort her, and it took extreme effort to fight it. Doesn't matter what you want now, she snapped. I'm here, and I'm staying. Get used to it, Bear. I was under no delusions about myself. I knew I was scruffy looking, my bear was unmanageable, and I was a grumpy pain in the ass on a good day. Why in the world would a woman as hot as her want to be anywhere near me? She could have men lining up around the corner to date her. What the hell? I pondered for a moment. She'd called Bear cute, and she knew about shifters. Maybe she was some sort of shifter groupie. I could show her that Bear wasn't cute, and neither was I. It could work. I'd scare her into leaving. I grabbed her arms and pulled her up to face me. Instead of looking scared, though, she just grinned at me and rested her hands on my bare chest. Why aren't you afraid of me? Because I have suffered abuse at the hands of a man. I know all about abusive men. And you, Matt Long, aren't one. This time, I couldn't fight instinct. I wrapped my arms around her and held her tighter. Someone hurt you? I growled under her neck. She shrugged. Doesn't matter. I'm here now, thanks to Beatrix and her buxom beauties. What made you choose a mail-order bride service anyway? You have a thing for buxom ladies? Fuck. She was teasing me, and all I could think about was sliding my dick into her. I looked between us, at the space where my flannel shirt on her gaped open and her tits pressed firmly against my chest, and licked my lips. It had been too long. You're poking a stick at a sleeping grizzly lady. She somehow managed to wiggle her body even closer to me. What are you going to do? Who are you? Your mate? I jerked away from her and glared. What the fuck do you know about mates? I lived with a family of gators a while back. I heard stuff about mates. Gators? I grabbed her and swung us both around until her back connected with the wall behind her. I put my forearm across her chest and held her there. Who the fuck sent you? Her eyes grew panicked, and she pulled uselessly at my arm. Stop it, Matt. No one sent me. I stayed where I was and glared at her. Tell me. Tears filled her eyes, and as she stretched her neck away from me, I saw bruises on her delicate skin. I moved my arm, but gently placed my fingers over the bruises. Looking over her neck, I spotted teeth marks from someone biting her. I cursed and moved across the room. Are you already mated? What the fuck is going on? Chapter 7. Matt My bear roared and fur sprouted along my body. Fury like I'd never felt before overwhelmed me until I had to throw my head back and shake the cabin with a massive roar. When I looked back at her, she was already recomposed with her hands on her hips. My ex tried to claim me as his mate. It didn't work, though, because I'm not his true fucking mate. He just bit me. After the first time, I guess he was humiliated, so he just kept trying. He was insane. This will fade. I'm not bonded to anyone. 
Her explanation just pissed my bear off even more. He hurt you? What kind of an asshole would do something like that? She surprised me by walking towards me, facing my anger despite the slight tremble in her hands. If you'll sit down and talk to me, I'll tell you the whole story. Not even my brothers would dare to face me when I was in one of my moods. Here was this small human woman challenging me. My bear wanted her. Bad. He wanted me to claim her. But I was in no shape to be anyone's mate. Besides, from the way it sounded, she'd already been through too much to have to put up with my crazy, wayward bear, or my crazier human. I'm not sure any of this is a good idea. She crossed her arms and stared up at me. I had planned on just coming here and hiding out for a bit before I left again. That's all changed now, though. Now I'm staying, and you're going to have to deal with me, whether you like it or not. Look, lady, I'm not looking for a wife. That ship has already sailed, right into the fucking bottom of the ocean, so that's a no-go. What happened? I looked down at her big, green eyes and felt myself waver. It wasn't the first time since she'd shown up that I'd felt this, but it was definitely the strongest the pull towards her had been. I could have fallen apart right in front of her like a little child, whining and complaining about the way things had turned out after my dad died. About the way I hadn't ever told him how important the ranch was to me, or how grateful I'd been to have such a wonderful father. What a fucking bitch I was being. This isn't happening. I've got to go. She stepped to the side and ushered me out. Go ahead, do your bear thing. I'll be here when you get back. Instead of arguing, I stepped around her and walked to the front door. I dared a glance back over my shoulder at her, at the marks on her neck, and then left. I didn't need anything else on my plate. She deserves to be with a man who can help her through her troubles. I couldn't help her. I couldn't even help myself. I ran through the woods, turning bare as I went, and headed straight to my brother's place. He was mated, and I needed to know what level of hell I'd fallen into. There had to be a way to get out of it, and I was certainly going to try. Chapter 8 Layla I fell asleep in his bed that night, frustrated and hurt. I knew the hurt was stupid, because I'd just met the big idiot, but I couldn't help it. Every time he denied it and acted as though I wasn't his mate, it felt like a little piece of my heart was being trampled. I just wanted to talk to him and explain things, maybe even tell him that my name wasn't Maggie. Instead, I was alone in his cabin. The next two days I spent waiting for him to return. Still no sign of him. My hurt had transformed into anger, and I was ready to rip him a new one, giant grizzly bear or not. I'd had my fair share of pacing the cabin alone, so I decided to visit the rodeo that I'd heard about on my trip into town to get a few more things. Normal rodeos didn't start until March or April, but shifters didn't feel the cold the same way that humans did, so they started their rodeo in cold-as-shit February. I dressed in jeans, boots, one of Matt's flannels, and a sweatshirt of his. I let my hair do its natural, wild tangle of curls around my head before heading outside. I stood next to the truck for a second and looked around. I couldn't see Matt, but I knew he was there. I could sense him close by. Hey, asshole, I'm taking your truck and I'm going on the rodeo. Maybe I'll meet a nice guy and bring him back here, since you're not living here anymore. You won't mind, right? A low growl sounded from the trees, but I just climbed into his truck and headed towards town. Either he'd show up or he wouldn't. I had a feeling he would, though. I'd been to rodeos before. I'd grown up in Georgia, and there'd been plenty of cowboys running around. Sitting down in the small stadium seats and landing, though, felt different. People shied away from me, and no one seemed inclined to start a conversation. Hell, even if I'd been serious about finding a man there, 
It would have been damned near impossible, since everyone treated me as though I were a leper. Landing residents were even less trusting than I was. I didn't let it get to me, and instead enjoyed the show. About halfway through, I sensed Matt. I could feel him when he showed up. The whole crowd seemed to go still, and when I looked over, he was standing at the end of my row of seating, fully dressed and looking about as delicious as a man could possibly look. He was dressed in jeans and a flannel. He'd shaved to reveal a chiseled jawline, and he'd cut his hair. He looked incredibly edible, instead of like the wild man I'd first met. He slowly made his way over to me and sat down stiffly, avoiding eye contact and staring straight ahead. You took my favorite shirt and my truck. I stood up and started shrugging out of his coat. Hold this. I'll just take this off and you can have it back. No harm done. Matt grabbed me and pulled me back down. Keep your fucking clothes on, woman. Layla. My name is Layla. He snapped his head in my direction and frowned. You said your name was Maggie. The emails said your name is Maggie. What's the deal? I ignored him and reached up to run my fingers through his shorter hair instead. You clean up real nice, cowboy. I won't lie and say that I didn't like the wild look, but this is hot as Hades. He glared down at me. Why do you insist on antagonizing me? Seeing him show up for me emboldened me. I leaned up and nipped at his earlobe. Because negative attention from you is better than no attention at all? Matt's hand landed on my thigh, and he squeezed. I don't have a lot of control, Layla. I haven't been out in a while. Over the show, and over pretending like I wanted anything more than for him to handcuff me to his bed, I stood up and looked down at him. Let's go home then. I'll tell you everything on the way, and then, when we get there, you can punish me for being a bad girl and telling you that my name was Maggie. He looked like he wanted to argue, but I'd worked his nerves enough that he didn't. This is a bad idea. I caught his hand and grinned. Fine then, you can call me Maggie, and I'll be your good little schoolgirl. Whatever you want. Just take me home, Bear. Chapter 9. Matt I sped up the mountain like the idiot I was. I kept telling myself that I needed to stay away from her. She deserved better than some fuck up with a broken bear. But no matter how many times I said it to myself, I couldn't escape her. She was like kryptonite. I'd spent two days hiding in the woods to avoid her, while never straying more than 50 feet from her, except the vague chat with my brother. I spent two days sleeping on a pile of leaves to keep myself from being in the cabin with her. I was afraid of making some dumb mistake, like claiming her. My bear wanted nothing more than to sink his teeth into her beautiful flesh and mark her so the world would know who she belonged to. Bear was relentless, too. He knew she belonged to us. He was pissed at me for hiding from her. That wasn't that unusual, though. I had spent years with my bear pissed at me, but I was in control then. I'd spent way too much time in an office, focused on money, and Bear had eventually stopped talking to me. It was only in the months after Dad died when I'd been avoiding everyone had Bear started coming out again. And when he showed up again, he did so with a vengeance. He no longer accepted being pushed down and ignored, and I had to appease him by suppressing the human form for months before we came to somewhat of a truce. I was still broken, but my bear didn't hate me anymore, and I'd gotten better and faster at the shift than I ever had been. My bear definitely wasn't quiet now as I swerved around a car that was going too slow and pushed on the gas pedal even harder. He was as eager to claim his mate as I was to be alone with Layla. I shot a look over at her. She was slipping out of the jacket she'd been wearing. What are you doing? She grinned. Getting undressed? Are you going to ask me any questions? 
I tried to focus on the road, but it was damned near impossible. I had to ask her about her name, though. I needed to find out who the hell she really was. Who are you? She started unbuttoning the flannel and turned to face me. Layla Harold, born and raised in Peach Pit, Georgia. I spent the last couple of years on a compound full of gator shifters. I dated the wrong guy and ended up getting trapped. After I knew what they were, Stephen wouldn't let me go. Last month, I stole lots of his money while he was away on business and escaped. I was on the run when I found Beatrix and her buxom beauties. I gave her half of that money so I could pretend to be Maggie and have a way out of the South and a place to lay low for a while. I stopped the truck in the middle of the road and slowly turned to face her. What? Yeah, me ending up at your doorstep was a fluke. I had no clue you were going to be a shifter or that we'd have any kind of connection. I wasn't even planning on sticking around for longer than I had to. He held you captive? My blood boiled, and I felt the urge to rip something apart with my bare hands. I punched the dash, cracking the heavy plastic, and then pulled my hands down my face roughly. It was still hard to control my anger these days. Where is he? She shrugged her shoulders, and my shirt slid down, revealing a smooth, satiny shoulder. The marks were faded, and I knew in a few more days they'd be completely gone. I don't know. Probably looking for me down there somewhere. I'm sure he's pissed and wants to kill me. He can't trace me, though. Beatrix was the only person who knew where I ended up, and she said that she was closing up shop and moving to California to be near her grandkids after I gave her the money. I felt myself starting to turn and held on tight to the steering wheel, willing Bear to stay buried inside. Layla scooted over next to me and wrapped her arms around my neck. She was too close. She could get hurt if I couldn't control Bear and stop the shift. Get back. She just tightened her grip and pressed her mouth against the side of my neck. No, you're okay. My Bear instantly settled, and my dick turned to stone. I sucked in a big breath and turned to face her. A human female with that much power over me wasn't something I'd ever thought possible. But here she was. You're going to tell me all about this ex later. After, she grinned. I started driving again. After. She visibly shuddered and undid another button of the shirt. I hadn't planned on letting things between us get this far, but hearing her threaten to bring another man home had enraged me. Bear was crazy and demanded that I claim her so she couldn't. I was still at odds with Bear on most things and had to fight him the entire way to the rodeo. He wanted to run there and scoop her up. He believed her fully and knew that she was our mate. I was slower on the take. The more I sat next to her, though, and the more I felt the connection. I was a goner. The only reason we weren't already pulled over on the side of the road was because I hadn't been with a woman in a long time, and I was slightly worried about hurting her. I slid the truck into its spot in front of my house and pulled Layla out with me through the driver's side. She squealed as I did, and then wrapped all of her limbs tightly around me. I pushed open the cabin door and then kicked it shut before carrying her over to the bed and dropping her on it. After I did, I backed away and sat at the kitchen table, facing her. I needed a second to calm down or I would hurt her. Come here. I shook my head. I was nervous. My brother, Alex, had tried to convince me that having a mate was the best thing that ever happened to him. But I wasn't so sure. I didn't know this woman, hadn't even known of her existence a few days ago. How could I trust what seemed like such a good thing when everything in my life had turned to shit? She stood up and slowly unbuttoned her shirt before opening and revealing that she wore nothing underneath. Her bare breasts called to me, and my mind went blank. How the fuck was I supposed to question something like that? She tossed the shirt at my head and then grinned at me. Come, bear. I want to play. 
I was on my feet in nanoseconds, moving to her. You're a tease. I don't tease. You're the tease. You hid from me and only came out when I threatened to bring another guy back here. I growled low in my throat and reached for her. When she sidestepped me and all I got was a wisp of her hair, I moved faster and caught her in my arms with her back to my chest. No other guys. Ever again. She wiggled her body against my dick and laughed. Hair fast. It's the bear. When you run, it increases the need to chase. I buried my nose in her hair and breathed her in. Delicious. I had a sweet tooth, like most bear shifters, and her vanilla scent with an underlying hint of honey was scrumptious. So, if I ran, you'd chase? She dropped out of my grip and then sprinted out of the front door. My dick hardened even more, even though it hardly seemed possible. I sprinted after her, feeling a need for her that surpassed any I'd ever felt before. She circled the side of the house and raced through the backyard, heading towards the woods. I cut her off and she ran back towards the front of the house. I kept close enough that she could feel me closing in, but I didn't grab her until she was just outside of the front door. She turned to see how close I was, and I was on her. I tackled her to the floor of the cabin, spinning to make sure she landed on top of me. Got you. Her wild laugh was like Cupid's arrow to the chest. I rolled us so that she was under me, and then I kissed her to stifle it. Except the plan backfired, because feeling her lips on mine dug the arrow in even deeper. I was fucked. Chapter 10. Layla. I opened my mouth to Matt's kiss and gave as good as he was giving. He tasted like wild berries and horny man, and it drove me a little crazy. I ran my hands through his hair and held him to me, desperate for more. Kissing down the side of my neck, he growled out my name and raked my sensitive skin with his teeth. I moaned and lifted my hips, needing to feel him against me. I jerked at his shirt until the button snapped off and went flying across the room. Without hesitation, I pushed his shirt off of his shoulders and down his arms. Too many clothes. He sat up and jerked the shirt off the rest of the way and then reached for my boots. He threw them over his head and then grabbed the button to my jeans before freezing. I looked up at him and saw that he was staring at my chest. A breast man? I cupped my large breasts in my hands and teased my nipples for him. The feeling was magnified under his inspection. Arching my back, I presented myself to him, feeling dizzy with lust. Matt's eyes turned gold, glowing, and I watched his hands turn more bare than man. He used his massive claw to rip the front of my jeans open, then, with his hands back to man, he pushed them farther down. Hey, those were expensive. He lowered his head to take one of my nipples into his mouth and then scraped his teeth over it. I'll buy you two more. I moaned. Matt. He devoured my chest, going from side to side, tasting and teasing me, until I thought my head would explode from the building pleasure. Only when I begged him did he trail kisses lower down my belly. He ripped my jeans the rest of the way off of me and then buried his face against my core. His mouth turned me into mush in a matter of seconds. I gasped as he spread my legs even wider and used his tongue to fuck me. I'd never been treated to such an exquisite thing in my life, and it took no time for the sensations to build getting closer and closer to a massive orgasm. Matt gave attention to my clit, sucking it into his mouth as he pushed two fingers into me and started an unforgiving rhythm. He twisted his tongue over me and then curled his fingers. My toes curled and I fell into an orgasm that was so powerful it almost hurt. I cried out and dug my hands into his shoulders, trying anything to stay grounded when I felt like I was going to shoot straight to the moon. When I stopped shaking, 
Matt lifted his glistening face and licked his lips before flashing me a grin that sent a jolt to what felt like my very soul. It was the first time I'd seen him smile, and I knew right then and there that nothing would ever be the same again. I was his. I now belong to Matt Long, through and through. You taste so sweet, so fucking delicious. I could taste you all day. As promising as it sounded, I ached for him to be inside me. I scooted out from underneath him and climbed to my feet. Pants off, cowboy. He looked up at me and groaned. Fuck. I flushed, realizing that he was getting quite the eyeful. I put my hands on my hips anyway and gave him an impatient look. Up. Matt jumped to his feet and easily pushed his pants down. He kicked off his boots and the pants followed. Then, standing naked in front of me, he grinned again and reached for me. I wanted my chance to worship at the altar of Matt, so I dropped to my knees in front of him and took his large erection in my hands. I sucked in a breath when I saw his eyes once again flash the golden glow. You don't have... I opened my mouth and took in his shaft, effectively cutting him off. I stroked the inches that I couldn't taste and started what I hoped was the best blowjob he'd ever received. I moaned in pleasure. Pleasing him felt almost as good as him pleasing me. Before I got too far along, Matt grabbed me and pulled me to my feet. He kissed me again, the taste of our juices mingling together, before pushing me towards the bed. Now. My excitement soared and I fell against the soft mattress. I started to turn, but Matt was already behind me, using his knee to widen my stance. His fingers pushed into me and I moaned. Matt, I need you. He replaced his fingers with the head of his dick and then pushed into me in one solid stroke. My knees buckled from the pleasure of feeling him in me, but he wrapped his arm under my hips and held me firmly in place. Fuck, you feel perfect. So good, Matt groaned as he pulled out and then slid back into me. I dug my fingers into the bedding and cried out my pleasure. I was louder than I'd ever been and couldn't even stop to think about whether or not I was embarrassing myself. He thrust into me over and over again, fast and then slow, slow and then fast. He pushed me towards the edge and then pulled back so I wouldn't come yet. I lost track of time, sense of where we were, and even who I was as he continued his movements over me. He surrounded me, never breaking contact. His free hand stroked over my back, tugging at my hair, toyed with my nipples. His mouth nipped at my back and teased my skin. Every part of him branded me until I felt like one giant exposed nerve ending. When his thrusts did get more erratic, he dropped his hands to my clit and circled it while he whispered against my ear that he wanted me to come for him. The mix of everything pushed me over the edge, and I came harder than ever. My toes curled, and I ripped the blankets off the bed as I jerked. White-hot orgasm washed over me spilled out of me and turned me liquid. Matt came with me as I squeezed tighter around him. He sank his teeth into my neck as he came inside of me. The feeling made my own orgasm last longer and caused it to be even stronger. I collapsed forward on the bed and Matt followed. Our skin was slick with sweat as he adjusted himself to make sure he wasn't suffocating me. My breathing was wild, and in those post-climax moments, I didn't feel like it would ever go back to normal. Chapter 11. Matt I shifted our bodies so that we were laying the right way in the bed and held her against my chest. I'd lost control and claimed her. I'd lost control and hadn't used a fucking condom. I rested my forearm over my eyes and blew out a big breath. I was waiting on the panic to hit. Surely I'd feel some. I realized that I'd fucked up and I'd want to beat the shit out of myself. Layla had fallen asleep with her head on my chest. 
I looked down at her and found myself smiling. It didn't make any sense. I'd run away from my own family and hadn't even ventured into town for months. I even ate as a bear to avoid it. I'd hold up in the cabin like a hermit, wanting nothing but quiet and time to figure out how to control my bear and my anger. I'd been so angry over the whole thing with Dad's will and the ranch ending up in Alex's hands. Not just the ranch, but my identity. Isolation was supposed to be a way for me to fucking find myself. Yet somehow I hadn't found a damn thing until Layla. I'd heard Dad talk about fate, bringing a shifter's mate before. He'd ended up with Mom by a stroke of fate, he'd always said. I'd just never bought into the fairy tale. Looking down at Layla, though, recognizing the way my heart beat for her, I had to think that maybe I'd been wrong all along. Hell, there was no maybe. I'd marked her as my own. She was mine, just as I was hers. I was worried about how she would react when she realized that I'd claimed her without permission. She had been the one to say it out loud. She told me that first day that she was my mate, but we hadn't talked about claiming. I hadn't been able to help it. Alex told me that he'd had a hard time fighting it, but he'd been able to. I guess I'd just been living with a broken bear for too long. There were times when I could not control the beast. Layla sighed in her sleep and wrapped her arm over my chest. She buried her face against my side and squeezed me. A slow grin spread across my face as I realized that as hard as I tried, there was no denying destiny. Layla had belonged to me from the day she arrived. The moment she swiped Bear on the nose and stepped around him into the cabin and into my heart. I'd never stood a chance against her. Chapter 12, Layla. When I woke up, Matt was knocked out beside me. I grinned up at him and slowly edged my way out from under his grip. I'd barely made it out of bed when he grabbed my arm and hauled me back into it on top of him. Where do you think you're going? I giggled and tried to stand up again. Bathroom. He kissed me, long and hard before releasing me. Hurry back. I peed and then brushed my teeth. When I made it back to bed, Matt was sitting with his back against the headboard and the sheets pulled up to his waist. I slid under the covers and cuddled into his side. It's freezing in here. Yeah, we might have left the front door open in our haste last night. I just shut it. I looked over at the closed door and frowned. So much for privacy. Just be glad it didn't happen on the side of the road. I barely got us back here. I tossed my leg over his and straddled him. Our naked bodies rubbed together as I settled in. Hi. He looked like he wanted to stay stoic, but then he laughed. The sound sent a jolt of energy straight to my core, and the transformation of his face made him look even sexier. I rested my hands on his shoulders and kissed him. I have to tell you something that might piss you off. I grimaced. I guess it's only fair. I've been trying to piss you off for days. He ran his fingers down my neck, causing an erotic chill to arch down my body. I might have claimed you in the moment last night. I ran my fingers over the spot he'd been touching and felt the slightly raised mark. It already healed and was now just a raised scar-like thing. Okay. You're not mad? I shook my head. No way. I grinned. This makes me feel safer. Now you're stuck with me. Even though we're mates, I was afraid you'd still try to get rid of me. He kept my ass in his big hands and pulled me farther against him. I'm still struggling with a broken bear, but I'll never try to get rid of you. That I can promise. I lifted my hips and then reached between us to grip him and line our bodies up. I don't think you're as broken as you say, but I've got better things to do right now than argue with you. After a morning spent rolling in the sheets, I got dressed and went to town to buy more food. Matt stayed in bed, 
It had been quite the visual. He was still naked, the state of dress he was most comfortable in, and lounging with a blanket thrown across his middle. I'd barely been able to resist staying and staring at him. The man was so sexy that I was almost willing to adapt to his reclusive lifestyle. Almost. I'd only recently gotten freedom back, and I wasn't willing to stay in all the time. I'd had plenty of that with Stephen. Matt told me about a larger grocery store in the next town over, so I headed that way. I drove with the windows down and listened to an old country station. It was better than nice to be able to get out and go. Stephen had been a controlling asshole and hadn't let me go anywhere after I knew about their secret. Even before that, though, I had been regulated to only leaving home when he could come along. I'd seen the concern flash through Matt's eyes when he thought about me going by myself, but he hadn't even vocalized it. He understood what being able to come and go as I pleased meant to me. He just kissed me and told me to hurry back. He seemed to know instinctually that it was exactly what I needed. I found myself shopping faster than I normally would in my excitement to get back to Matt. I made my way up and down the aisles, tossing items in my buggy as I thought of things I could make for him to impress him with my ninja cooking skills. For the first time since I'd run from Stephen, I wasn't paying attention to my surroundings. Suddenly, my buggy was grabbed and yanked with a force that stopped it in its path. I gasped and looked up, into eyes that were similar to Matt's, but different. Chapter 13 Layla Who are you? A gruff voice asked. The man was almost as big as Matt, and his face bore a confused look. I stepped away and frowned. I didn't feel safe. Not at all like I had that first day with Matt. I was trembling, but tried to appear tough. What does it matter to you? Elizabeth, the woman who'd given me a ride the first day, stepped out from behind him with a baby in her arms. Jesus, Alex, get out of her face. I breathed a sigh of relief when I saw her and then damn near cried when I spotted the baby. I loved babies, and for a while, it seemed like the dream that I might ever have one of my own was dead. Now... Well, I realized that it could be a reality with Matt. I couldn't help the big smile that accompanied that thought. Elizabeth, hi. Look at this beautiful baby. Is he yours? She held him out to me, despite the big guy's growl. Would you like to hold him? He's on my short list currently. Little Connor doesn't like sleeping at night. I wrapped my arms around him and peered down into his tiny face. He looked just like the big idiot next to us and reached up to tug on my hair. I rocked him back and forth, feeling tears well up in my eyes. Oh, God, he's so cute. I know you're the one staying with Matt. His smell is all over you. I'm just curious as to how the fuck you found him. He's been locked up in that cabin for almost half a year. Little Connor started to cry at his dad's tone, and I reluctantly handed him back to Elizabeth. That's none of your business. He stepped closer to me. It is my business. He might have decided to trust you, but that doesn't mean I have to. You just dropped right out of nowhere. Our family isn't going to suddenly roll over and welcome you with open arms just because you spread your legs for Matt. I wanted to slap the hell out of him and had to actually rationalize it all out, play by play, a few times before deciding that it wouldn't go well. Just as I was about to chew him out, Elizabeth beat me to it. Seriously, Alex? I dropped right out of nowhere and you didn't think twice about it. Leave Layla alone. She winked at me. I knew you didn't look like a Maggie. Your real name got around. He shook his head. That's different. Matt is going through some shit. It would be easy for someone to take advantage of him by, say, claiming they were his mate. The guy's in a vulnerable position is all I'm saying, easily fooled. I pulled down my collar and showed them the scars that were still fading from Stephen's bites. Turns out that you can't actually claim someone who isn't your real mate. It doesn't take. 
Matt and I are mates, and I don't want or expect anything from you or your family. Elizabeth sucked in a rough breath and then pushed Alex with her free hand. Leave her alone, right now, and we are going to welcome her with open arms. We're having a birthday party for Matt's little sister tonight. Please come. Alex kept his eyes on my neck and then sighed. Fine, come. Bring my big brother if you can get him to come. I'll pick you up, if you want to come, that is. A chance to meet new people and see where Matt came from? I couldn't say no. Sure, what time? Alex pouted while we made arrangements and then stalked off before we were finished. Elizabeth rolled her eyes. Men, I would ask you if Matt is this moody, but I already know he is. I smiled and shrugged. He is moody, but he's a good guy at heart. Maybe he can play nice with everyone tonight. She frowned. I seriously doubt he'll want to come. He hasn't been to a family function in a while. After everything that went down with the ranch, he just kept to himself. I didn't pry because I wanted Matt to be the one to explain everything to me. We'll see what we can do then, right? I hurried through the rest of my grocery shopping and then stopped at a department store while still in that neighboring town. I quickly found makeup and a few different dresses to wear, as well as new shoes. I didn't want to look embarrassingly plain the first time I met all of my mate's family. I also wasn't going to let Alex skew my view. Surely, the rest of them were nicer, I hoped. Chapter 14. Matt I hadn't wanted to let Layla go shopping, at all, much less by herself. But I could tell it was something she needed to do. We'd have to have the unpleasant conversation about her piece of shit ex later, so I'd know better what she needed from me. I wanted to make my mate happy. My bear agreed with me, though he'd been pissed that I let her go alone. I'd pace the cabin until I was dizzy from the incessant circles I'd been making, I thought about everything that could go wrong. Landing was full of bears, and they'd all smell me on her. They'd know she was taken, but still. I'd made enemies by being an asshole. Would anyone take their anger towards me, out on her? When I heard my truck coming up the mountain, I practically ran to the door. I needed to see her to calm my bear down. By the time she parked, I was there beside the truck, opening the door and pulling her into my arms. I held her head and took her mouth in a fierce kiss. My bear instantly relaxed while my cock stiffened. She was my female. I stroked my tongue over her lips and growled when she opened her mouth to me. She tasted like a little piece of heaven, and I took her for all she was worth. My hands moved down to her delicious ass and I gripped her hard, pulled her against my body so she could feel just how much I wanted her. She hooked her leg over my thigh, and then I had her pinned against the side of the truck. My bear growled, and I had to pull back from Layla's kiss so I could understand what he was pissed about. Then I got it. A faint whiff of another male came off of her. I jerked back and growled low in my throat. Who touched you? She rolled her eyes and cocked her hip out to the side while gently touching her mouth in a way that went straight to my dick. You should recognize the scent. Your idiot brother accused me of being some sort of super spy. I breathed in deeper and singled out Alex. Fur erupted on my arms and chest, and I angrily headed towards the woods. I could be at his place in less than half an hour. I would kill him for touching my mate. Layla grabbed my arm and clung to my back when I didn't stop moving. Stop it, you big oaf! I shrugged her off and kept going. Ow! I jerked around and saw her on the ground, holding her knee. Fear overrode my anger, and I rushed back to her side. What happened? She reached up and wrapped her arms around me before tugging me down to the ground. She rolled on top of me and straddled me with her hands on my chest. Nothing happened. I just needed you to stop and listen to me. I wanted to be pissed at her manipulation tactic, but her ass was perfectly cradling my dick, and it was hard to think about anything else. I caught the sides of my shirt that she was wearing and tugged. 
the buttons flew apart, revealing her perfect bare breast to me. She squealed and covered herself. No, you've got to listen to me first. I blew out a rough breath. There were definitely parts of having a mate that were difficult. Chapter 15, Matt. I ran into Alex with Elizabeth and Connor in the store. I growled and shook my head. Don't say his name right now. She gave me a flat stare. Fine. I ran into Mail with Elizabeth and Connor in the store. Mail is worried about you. He thinks that I may be taking advantage of your current state, which, according to him, is shit. I scowled. Shit? She leaned down and nipped my chin. His words, not mine. I love your current state. I lost my breath when she rotated her hips to punctuate her words. I'd had something to say, but when she did that, everything in my brain turned to sludge. He was an asshole, but Elizabeth is great. And Connor? Oh my God, that baby is adorable. She actually invited me to your little sister's birthday party. Tonight. Both of us, actually. No. She pressed her lips to my bare chest and then stood up. Yes, I'm going. Elizabeth is going to pick me up at 6.30. Unless you want to drive me. I hadn't been with my family together in a group in a long time. I still had issues with the way things had gone down after Dad died. There was no way I was going to show up with Broken Bear at Bailey's birthday party. Maybe I did need to go over and see everyone, but I wasn't going to interrupt her party with bullshit that was sure to arise. I'm not going. I climbed to my feet and headed towards the house. You do what you want. Something hit me in my back and I turned around to find Layla standing with a handful of pebbles she'd just picked up. She stood there, glaring at me with her shirt open, chest exposed. Don't be an asshole. Seeing her like that did something to me, and I strode back over to her and scooped her up before she even knew what was happening. I took her into the house, and we found a useful way to spend the afternoon. Elizabeth is going to be here soon, Matt. Are you sure you're going to stay and pout around the cabin instead of being with your family and me? I was in bed, stretched out, gripping the sheet so hard that my fingers were going numb. Layla looked amazing. It physically hurt to turn her down, especially when she looked like that. She stood there, her body on display in a dress that fell off her shoulder and showed a lot of skin. Skin that I wanted to taste again. Too much skin. It's February. Why are you wearing a dress? She crossed her arms and tapped the boot she was wearing on the floor. It's a sweater dress. I'm also wearing tights and boots, and I'll wear a coat. Don't be an asshole just because you're feeling left out. I have begged you, in more ways than one, to come with me. I wear what I want, when I want. You don't ask me questions about it either. What you could do in this situation is come with me. Then you wouldn't have to stay here and worry that some other big bad male was looking at me. I jumped to my feet and stormed across to the door. Of course she was right. I knew she was right. I should go with her. She was going to my family's, and I was letting her face them alone. Knowing I was wrong didn't make it any easier to say it, or to go and face them. I shifted, letting Bear take over, and stormed out of the house, feeling frustrated with myself. If you're going to be a big brat and shift to avoid me, the least you could do is learn how to close the damn door. I heard her scream at my back before I heard the slam. I grunted and went into the woods, making use of the cave that rested a mile back from my house. I looked around at it, feeling disgusted with myself, not just my actions, but my living habits. Layla had swept into my life like a breath of fresh air and warmed up my cabin and my life in a matter of days. She'd organized stuff and even brought a candle home. The fucking place felt like a home already. Looking around the cave I stayed in when I was a bear made me snarl. 
It was filthy. There was even some sort of rotting fruit in one corner. I sat back, resting on my ass, and used my paw to scratch my chin. My bear was furious at me, which wasn't really that unusual. He was only happy when Layla was near. I huffed and tried my best to be stubborn enough to sit it out, but every second felt like a million years. I looked at my paws and combed out a knot of fur on my leg. Heaving out another sigh, I shook my head and stood up. I just needed to run through the woods. I went down on all four legs and ran for all I was worth. I ran straight back to the cabin. I could feel that Layla was already gone, but it didn't stop me from throwing open the cabin door, hoping to find her in my bed. I shifted back and headed to the shower. I'd made a mistake, and I was man enough to admit it. For her. I cleaned myself and got dressed in the nicest button-down I owned. I combed my wet hair back and pulled on my cowboy hat before grabbing my keys and getting in my truck. It didn't take me long at all to reach the property line of the long ranch. I stopped my truck there and looked out at the land. Dad and Alex had been convinced that I'd only cared about the ranch for the money. They'd been wrong. I'd been an ass to Alex and Elizabeth when I found out the ranch was going to Alex, just because he'd knocked Elizabeth up. Looking back, I realized I owed Elizabeth an apology. Hell, it hadn't even been Alex's fault. Somehow, I'd let Dad die thinking that I didn't care about the family business, that I was a man only concerned with money and material things. I'd somehow hidden how much I really cared about the place. I shrugged off the feelings that settled heavy on my shoulders and drove on towards the house. Layla was inside there somewhere, and I knew I belonged at her side. I parked and walked to the front door. Without knocking, I let myself in and followed my mate's scent to the kitchen. She was standing with her back to me, helping mom do something. She'd covered the sexy little dress with an apron that had pulled her hair into a messy ponytail. I knew we were bonded to each other already, but seeing her like that hit me so hard in the chest that it actually hurt. I was the luckiest man in the world. I just then, in that very second, realized that nothing else mattered. Alex could keep the ranch. It just didn't matter. It was nothing when compared to Layla. Chapter 16, Layla I'd arrived at the party and met Matt's family without a hitch. They'd all heard of me already and were expecting me, so it wasn't a shock. While some of the brothers had questioning looks on their faces, Matt's mom, Caroline, was a sweetheart. She'd been eager to have my help in the kitchen, and before we knew it, the party had moved there, as we laughed and moved around each other. Bailey stood between us, watching as we put the final touches on her cake. I'd proved to be an icing whiz, and the cake looked beautiful. All of the food was finally ready, and everyone was standing around waiting to eat. It's so cool that you know all of this stuff. Mom's cakes always look so messed up. Bailey giggled as she bumped me with her hip. One year, it toppled over. It fell right off the plate and just landed on the floor. Icing went everywhere. I laughed, but then shook my head. Sometimes the messiest cakes taste the best. Isn't that right, Caroline? She grinned at me over Bailey's head. I sure do. I'll admit, though, that this is stunning. I opened my mouth to reply, but suddenly the air around me felt like it was sizzling electricity. I felt my body instantly responding in excitement and blushed. He's here. I cleared my throat and rolled my shoulders before turning around. My heart leapt. Matt, he'd come and he looked amazingly hot. I dropped the spatula I was holding and ran to him, unable to contain my excitement. I jumped into his arms and grinned down at his handsome face. Without a care in the world about who was watching us, I knocked his cowboy hat off of his head and kissed him with everything I had. Matt wrapped his arms around me and kissed me back with just as much heat. His hands roamed to my ass and then farther down to slip under my dress. A throat cleared beside us, and I pulled away, suddenly remembering where we were. My blush deepened, and I forced Matt to put me down. 
Sure enough, everyone in the room was watching us with wide eyes. Caroline had a huge grin on her face. She wiped her hands and then walked toward us. Her eyes filled with tears and she stared at Matt. Matt, honey, I'm so glad you're here. I stepped out of the way and watched with a knot in my throat as she grabbed Matt and hugged him tight to her body. Bailey was right behind her, throwing her little body at him. I met Matt's eyes over their heads and mouthed a thank you to him. It meant everything to me that he'd come, but I could see that it meant just as much to his family. He raised an eyebrow at me and then nodded to the cake. Instead of answering him, I just grinned. I had lots of secret talents that he was going to find out about eventually. Damn, Layla. You know what? Maybe I was wrong about you. I scowled at Alex. Of course you were, asshole. Matt disengaged from his mother and sister and shoved his brother's shoulder. You heard the lady. You were wrong. Don't let it happen again. I stiffened as Alex stood up taller and puffed out his chest. The last thing they needed was a fist fight. Alex shoved Matt back. How was I supposed to know that she wasn't taking advantage of you? You've been depressed and locked away for so long, we were starting to forget what you looked like. You can't blame me for being suspicious. Who would have thought that such a fine woman would fall for a sullen, salty prick like you? Matt shoved him back and then locked Alex's head under his arm. Don't forget that you're still the little brother, Alex. Alex sent a rib shot to Matt and then slipped out of his grip. Yeah, I remember that you're an old man. I waited with my breath frozen in my lungs to see what Matt was going to do. I wasn't stupid enough to get between the two of them. I liked all of my teeth where they were, thank you. Matt suddenly laughed and shrugged. Be nice to my mate, or I will make you remember how hard I used to kick your ass. His smile sent tingles straight to my core, and I couldn't help but wrapping myself around him. I pressed my face into his chest and grinned. This man impressed the hell out of me, right and left. It was a mistake. Won't happen again. Everyone knows she's yours now. I raised my head. I'm my own, but that's nice of you anyway. Matt stole a kiss. You're mine, but we can phrase it however you like. I gave him a growl of my own and then grinned. I'm glad you came. He nipped my ear and grunted. Keep that in mind later, baby. I laughed as Bailey faked a gag. I secretly brushed my hand over Matt's already hard dick and winked at him. Got it covered. The party lasted for several hours. Bailey was having too much fun for anyone to cut out early. Having Matt back seemed to make everyone feel festive. He himself seemed to be lighter. He laughed more, and every look he sent my way was a grin, or a heated one that took my breath away. As much as I was enjoying myself, I was eager to get back home with him. By the time we were able to sneak away, it was nearly midnight. I was exhausted, but all I could think about was getting Matt out of his clothes and into bed. I wanted to wrap myself around him and stay that way for weeks. Seeing him with his family, coming out of his shell, made me realize just how much I already cared for him. I'd never been in love before, but I damned well was now. It was scary that it happened so fast, but the feelings were there. No use ignoring them to fit some preconceived idea that I had in my head about the speed at which relationships should progress. The entire drive back to the cabin, Matt had his free hand all over me, he tried to get up my dress, but my tights were in the way. I laughed at the growl he sent my way when he'd realized it. I slipped my hand into his lap and tried to work at the button while he drove. One sharp tug at the wheel, though, and I stopped that. Turned out that touching Matt's dick directly affected his ability to keep the truck on the road. Who knew? We got to the cabin, our frustration building until I thought we were going to implode. I wanted him so bad that I was shaking. I jumped out of the truck on my side and ran around to Matt, ready to start our night. Matt was stock still, though. His nose lifted, taking in the night. I was about to ask him what he was doing when he shoved me to the side just as a mass flew into him 
knocking him against the side of his truck. Chapter 17 Layla I screamed as I hit the ground hard. Matt shifted into a bear in seconds, his claws swiping at whatever was on him. I stared hard in the faint moonlight at the shifting form that was against him, slowly turning into an alligator. I screamed again as I realized that it was Stephen. Seeing his huge alligator form sent terror racing through my body. I watched in horror as his massive jaws snapped down on Matt's leg. He rolled and dragged Matt to the ground before opening his mouth to clamp higher up on his body. Matt ripped his claws up the soft underside of Stephen's massive body, and blood spurted. Stephen rolled away and shifted back to his human form before taking off towards the woods. I watched as blood poured from his chest. Matt released a roar that felt like it shook at the ground. He raced after Stephen, his eyes glowing golden in the darkness. I scrambled to my feet and chased after them. Nothing could happen to Matt. Please, please don't let anything happen to Matt. I couldn't breathe as fear clogged my throat. Stumbling through the woods, I cried out Matt's name. If I was too late and anything happened to him, I didn't know what I'd do. I couldn't be without him. I heard another roar and followed it, tripping and catching my hand on a sharp stick. I cried out again, but didn't stop moving towards the sounds. I found Matt's bear hovering over Stephen's limp form. He snapped his head towards me, blood dripping from his mouth. I covered my mouth and turned away from the scene. I was glad with the outcome, but the dead body, mauled as it was, wasn't something I needed to keep looking at. Stephen was gone. It was over. Warm arms wrapped around me. I'm sorry. I leaned into him. Don't be... He found me and he attacked you. He would have killed us both if he'd been able to. Matt easily lifted me into his arms and carried me back to the cabin. So that was your ex? Nice guy. That was him. It's over now, though. I don't know how he found us, Matt. I thought... I thought I'd handled it. I thought I'd hidden my tracks well enough. I'm the one who should be sorry. He put me down on the steps and stared at me. Blood coated his naked body, but it didn't matter. It was his badge of honor. He'd proven that he was willing to fight to the death for me. He was more than I deserved. I ducked my head and noticed that his leg was bleeding and that he was holding it off the ground slightly. I gasped and dropped to my knee so I could look at it. He bit you. You're hurt, Matt. He grunted. It's not pleasant, but it'll heal soon. Stop it, Layla. You look like you're about to crumble. This wasn't your fault. I shook my head. It was. He was here because of me. You got hurt because of me. You had to do that because of me. I'm so sorry, Matt. I'm so, so sorry. Three massive bears ran into the clearing beside Matt's house. They roared and stood on their back legs before shifting into Matt's brother's. Alex, Michael, and John hurried to their brother's side while also looking around. What happened? Michael, the third oldest brother, asked with a wild look on his face. It smells terrible, like blood and swamp. Matt turned to me. Why don't you go inside and get cleaned up? We have to take care of this, okay? I nodded and went inside, feeling worse than I could have imagined. Chapter 18. Matt. Layla turned and disappeared inside the cabin with tears still in her eyes. I swore and turned to my brothers. Lucas was out of town on some trip across the states, but the rest had come running as soon as they heard my call. I held out my hand and clasped each of theirs in turn. Thanks for coming. I told them what happened and led them to the body. I stared down at it, feeling angry all over again. He was the man who'd marked my mate. He came to try and hurt her again. He had to die. I felt no remorse for his life being lost. Shifters had their own law and their own way of policing it. He was a sick animal, and he'd been put down. Simple as that. 
Michael stared down at the body with a scowl curling his scarred upper lip. Piece of shit? He tried to mark her? I growled and barely held back the shift. He did that and worse. Alex nodded. Then you did the right thing. Let's load him into the back of your truck and go from there. We'll need to be on guard for a while. Who knows if anyone will come looking for this piece of shit. I'd rather us not be caught with our pants down if they do. Michael leaned over and hefted the carcass over his shoulder. You owe me for this. Consider me owing you all one. Take his body down to the river. Leave him beside it, where the animals can find him and finish him. I've got to get back to Layla. She's convinced herself that this is all her fault. Alex patted me on the shoulder. Take care of her. Elizabeth informed me that if I had anything to do with running her off, she'd skin my hide and make a bearskin rug for the bedroom. It seems your maid and mine took a liking to each other. Take care of that leg, too. I looked down at the reminder that I'd almost lost the fight because I wasn't focused. Piece of shit caught me off guard. You mean with your pants literally down? Couldn't help notice that you two seemed a little eager to get home tonight. I thumped him on the back and headed towards the house. You're not all wrong, brother. Leave the truck back at the main house if it's easier. Thanks for this. Alex gave me one last nod and then joined the others. I made my way inside to check on my mate. I didn't give a fuck what happened to the body of that piece of trash gator. It could have rotted behind my cabin for all I cared. I just wanted to get inside and take care of Layla. I heard the shower running and stepped into the bathroom. The shower door was steamed up, but I could see her silhouette leaning against the wall, looking defeated. I opened the door and climbed in. Scoot over. She turned to face me, and tears spilled down her face. I'm so sorry, Matt. I quickly rinsed all of the blood off of my body, so it would be one less reminder for her. Then I pulled her into my arms and held her tight. You didn't do that. I'm glad it's over, if anything. You don't have to hide anymore. You can do whatever you want here. She rested her cheek against my chest. I was terrified. I don't know what I'd do without you. I rubbed her back, soothing her. You won't ever have to find out. Everything's okay, Layla. How about we wash up and then go to bed? It's been a long night. She nodded and silently grabbed a bar of soap. With shaking hands, she took her time washing me. Her eyes moved over me, taking time examining me to make sure I was okay. My leg was already closing up and any pain was long forgotten. So it was hard for me to keep my body from responding to her movements. I didn't want to push for sex when she was upset, even if I did think it might help. I just remained silent as she washed me, happy to be tormented by my mate. Chapter 19 Matt Layla looked up at me with wide eyes and then looked back down at my leg. You're healed. I told you I'd heal up. When are you going to believe me? I'm okay, baby. She seemed to deflate against my chest. I knew it, but I just got so freaked out, Matt. I can't lose you. I love you. Hearing the words made everything right with the world. Nothing else mattered except being with her for the rest of my life. I could work as a farmhand at the ranch for all I cared. As long as I got to come home and hear my mate say that she loved me, I'd die a happy man. I picked her up and held her against me. I love you too, mate. She kissed me, pinning her chest to mine. Make me forget, Matt. I just want to think about you and me tonight. I stepped out of the shower and carried her to our bed. I would do anything she asked of me. But this request seemed like a gift to me. Her body glistened as water rolled down her soft skin, marking trails that I followed with my lips. I covered her in kisses, tasting her everywhere. She writhed against me, silently asking me for more until her pleas became louder. I buried my face between her thighs, licking and sucking her until she climaxed. 
I drove her to orgasm after orgasm, determined to make her forget anything but the small and intimate world that only the two of us shared. I slipped two fingers into her body and curled them, finding the spot that made her scream when she came. Her liquid flowed freely, coating my fingers and lips. I was a happy man, content and feasting on her body for the rest of the night. Layla eventually pushed me away, though. She clamped her legs together and used my hair to pull me up to her so she could kiss me. Her tongue slipped into my mouth, and she gripped my shoulders so hard I could feel her nails digging into my skin. Make love to me. I didn't need to be told twice. I wanted to be in her more than anything in the world. I settled between her thighs and slowly, carefully slid into her. Her wetness made it easier, and then I was home, surrounded by her wet heat. Her body fit mine perfectly as I pulled out and pushed back in. Layla held on to me, keeping me close as I thrust into her again and again. I kept it slower, making love to her until we were both panting and moaning. Just when I didn't think I could last a second longer, she tilted her hips and I slid deeper, hitting a new spot in her body. She cried out as another orgasm shook her body, clamping down on me. The feeling of her body sheathing my cock was too much. I thrust into her once more and then buried myself as I came deep in her. I whispered into her neck how much I loved her as our orgasms rocked us. Chapter 20, Layla After a couple of days full of rolling in the sheets, earth-shattering orgasms and whispered words of love, I felt much better. Stephen was gone, and my past gone with him. I didn't have to look over my shoulder anymore. Matt was completely healed, and everything was going to be okay. As I spotted my mate outside, roaming in his bear form, I couldn't help but smile. Things were going to be better than okay. I'd found the man who was made just for me. I couldn't believe how lucky I was. Landing Wyoming and Beatrix's buxom beauties had turned out to be the two of the luckiest finds, and Matt Long was the most perfect man that ever walked the earth. Perfect for me, that is. I slipped on my jacket and walked outside to see what he was doing. He'd been going outside here or there, working on something in the shed out back. At that moment, he was trying to pick up a two-by-four with his paw. He huffed and swiped at it, sending it skating across the ground a good 20 feet. He stood up straight and growled. Hands might work better, Matt. What are you doing? He spun around to face me and instantly shifted. His naked body steamed in the cold air. Hey, I was just cleaning up. I raised an eyebrow and moved closer. I couldn't stay away when he was naked. Our bodies worked like magnets. I was drawn to him constantly. Cleaning up? His cheeks actually turned pink. Yeah, I was building and made a mess. I grinned and pressed my body against his. His warmth seeped through my jacket. What were you building, mate? He held me and gave me a soft kiss. It's a surprise. I grinned. Is it done? Instead of answering, he lifted me into his arms and carried me into the shed. He put me down and moved to lift the tarp off of a big object in the corner. Your smell changed. I know it's early, but I wanted to make this for you. We'll have to move out of the cabin and get a bigger house, too. I'll have to go back to the ranch, start working again. It'll be okay, though. I'm happy. I'd never seen him like this. He was rambling nervously. Matt, slow down. What are you talking about? He pulled the tarp off and revealed a rustic crib. We're going to have a cub. My knees instantly went weak, and I fell into Matt's waiting arms. He sat us on the ground and held me in his lap. Tears fell from my eyes, and I was instantly sobbing hysterically. Matt took my tears to mean I was upset and tried to comfort me. It's okay, Layla. It's a good thing. We can do this together. I pushed him back and straddled him. I know, I blubbered. 
I'm so happy. We're going to have a baby, Matt. A baby. A cub. You're happy? I laughed and then kissed him. My heart was so full, it felt like it would burst. I deepened the kiss and held on as he rolled us over so that he was on top of me. I'm so happy, Matt. All my dreams have come true. You're going to be the best dad. My big bad bear had a few drops of moisture in his own eyes. He kissed me again and then blew out a big breath. I was worried there for a second. I wrapped my arms around him and pulled him against me, taking his weight on top of me. I am in this forever. You're everything to me. We're going to have a family, Matt. How could I ever be anything but happy? Marry me. My mouth fell open, and it was my turn to stutter. What? He grinned. Marry me. Be my weight and my wife. I screamed, my excitement getting the best of me. Yes. We celebrated by christening the shed and scaring all the wildlife in the area away with our love sounds. I poured every ounce of strength I had into showing Matt just how much he means to me. We ended up snapping a piece of the crib off in our excitement. Matt barely noticed and muttered about having plenty of time to fix it, and then we went back to celebrating. The way things were going, I was sure it wasn't the last time we'd break something, and I was completely okay with that. This has been Rancher Bear's Mail Order Mate, Rancher Bear's Series Book 2. Written by Candace Ayers. Narrated by McKenna Lee.